History Bombs pilot episode action. Yo, Narrator Man, what's up? Wilbur Wright, what are you doing? Well, this is my gig, man. History of aviation. Yes, we don't get to you for two minutes and 50 seconds. Now get lost. Whatever, man. Jeez. Why are the British so uptight? It's time for the History Bomb of aviation. And our journey begins in ancient Greece. Icarus and Daedalus took to the skies. Tragically flew just a little too high. Waxy wings got melty like a candle. The sun proved too hot to handle. So before you make wings, don't be a hero. Keep the Wax for your legs and the feathers in a pillow. Wise words there. So, not the most promising start for human aviation, but bizarrely, this mythical mishap inspired the first pioneers of flight. Let's meet one of them now. The year is 1010. An English monk has a similar plan. Homemade wings, jumps off an alley, flew 200 meters and got a bit flappy. Crash landed and broke his limb. Should have stuck to praying and singing hymns. Oh yes, silly monk. And that set the tone for the next few hundred years of human aviation. Not so much flying, but assisted falling. The first person to think logically about human flight was this chap. Welcome to Florence, lovely to meet ya. I'm in the middle of the Mona Lisa, but when I'm not painting, I like to sketch drafts for parachutes, gliders, and watercrafts. I didn't have the time to make them, I'm far too busy. Arrivederci, Leonardo da Vinci. Arrivederci, indeed. He did have some pretty good drawings, but sadly, these weren't discovered for 300 years. In the meantime, Europeans were getting very excited about hot air ballooning, and at the forefront were the Montgolfier brothers. Bonjour, we're Montgolfiers. Gonna take you up in the air. We learned that hot air rises, sends the balloons and we want some prizes. Little a sheep with a chicken and a duck. Most of France will like kiss kiss up. That's a style, that's a load. Like a balloon to get out of control. Two problems with balloons. One, impossible to change direction. Two, they caught on fire. Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin solved the first problem with his dirigible airships, but they still caught on fire. Hindenburg disaster, anyone? Now, whilst the French were messing around with airships, it was naturally left to a right-minded Englishman to get on with the proper business of pioneering fixed-wing aircraft. That man was Sir George Cayley. Silly French, I have no time for dirigibles. It's time for the fundamental principles of flight. I say, what, what, where? My butler flew a glider from here to there. The mechanics of flying, they are a must. Wait, lift, drag, thrust. I need a lightweight engine, but they think I'm demented. So it's the 1850s, they haven't been invented. Cayley's work ushered in the age of steam. From the 1870s, lightweight steam engines were being used for short test flights. And in the 1890s, Samuel Langley achieved an unmanned flight of one kilometer. At the dawn of the 20th century, Manned flight was finally realized. Hey, Wilbur, let's do this right. We're gonna be the grandmasters of flight. Oh, yeah! Got the power, free access control. Yaw, pitch and roll. We built a bike plane, called it the Flyer. Launched off a catapult and got much higher. Planes were our invention, loud and clear. So quit whining about our landing Ooh, gear! Yeah. There is still argument as to whether the Wright brothers did make the first plane because they used a catapult, not wheels, to take off. Nevertheless, their revolutionary steering mechanism changed everything. In 1908, Louis Blériot flew from France to England, and other pilots, both men and women, started taking to the skies to push forward the barriers of speed and distance. Pretty soon, however, planes were being put to a far more destructive task. My name is Manfred von Richthofen, who might know me as the Red Baron. Shot down allied planes for fun. 80 kills with just two machine guns. Bonjour, je m'appelle René Fonck. Number one pilot for La France. 75 kills, I'm as good as they get. Even more deadly than a stale baguette. Phew, thank goodness that's over with. Oh, here we go, here's World War II. And interestingly, it wasn't just the men who were flying as pilots. We are the night witches from Russia with love. We dropped 3,000 tons of bombs from above. Flying at night over enemy lines, each woman flew over 1,000 times. When you think about World War II and the brave pilots who fought for you, it wasn't just Bertie, Percy and Peter, it was Mary, Natalia, Irina and Vera. Incredible story. Both world wars were unimaginably destructive, but through their course, human flight was revolutionized. Planes were getting faster and more ambitious, and gutsy test pilots were pushing them to the limit. After World War II, flying was sexy. Chuck Yeager, pilot of renown, in 47, I brought the speed of sound. Albert Crossfield, US pilot 2, took a sky rocket, passed Mac 2. Yuri Gagarin, in Russian ace, in 61, they went to outer space. Neil Armstrong, how'd you do, in 69, and what's on the moon? And the need for speed 
is still alive. In 2010, Boeing hit Mark 5, and now for space, the final frontier. Will space tourism soon appear? Whatever happens, we've come a long way from Icarus and Daedalus flapping away. Thanks for joining us for the ride. You got half a second to subscribe.